and welcome to lecture 43. From today we are going to start our new module that is what is for say design of low speed counter rotating fan. In last module we were discussing about design of low speed axial flow compressor. In that module we have discussed what all are the need of this low speed configuration and why the research that is what is going on in universities using say low speed test rigs available with them. Then we have taken one of the numerical for design of low speed axial flow compressor using free vortex concept using fundamental approach and by using say force vortex concept. And I am sure you might have done your calculation, pen paper calculation, you might have developed your own Excel design sheet based on what all we have discussed up till now. We also were discussing about say kind of aerofoils what we have used, how to develop those aerofoils, how to stack those aerofoils and then after how to incorporate your stagger angle in order to make the blades. And that is what will give you the confidence for say design of low speed axial flow compressor. Now with this fundamentals let us move with say new kind of concept in science. We say it is a new concept but earlier people they have explored and based on their experience they try to incorporate new fundamental approach for the design and that is how the new development that is what is going on. The question may come like what is the need why we are having say counter rotating fan kind of configuration or counter rotating axial flow compressor. So here if you look at this is what is our development we can say earlier we were having our say turbojet engines where my thrust requirement that is what was been fulfilled by my mass flow rate into exhaust velocity. And if you recall we were discussing that can be increased or the thrust can be increased by increasing either your mass flow rate or exhaust velocity. Now since my dimensions for turbo jet engine that is what is fixed and that is the reason why increase of mass flow rate that is what is a constraint. Next option that is what was with us it is to increase the exhaust velocity. But when we are talking for increasing the exhaust velocity my turbine entry temperature that need to be higher and that is where the constraint it has come with the type of material what we are using for the turbine. Next we have thought of having say new kind of concept that is what is say high bypass ratio or low bypass ratio engine. If you are talking about say commercial aircraft application we are having high bypass ratio engine where it says around approximately 70 percent of your thrust that is what will be generated by fan only and remaining 30 percent that is what will be by the core engine. We have discussed about what all are the advantages for say high bypass ratio engine and low bypass ratio engine. So we will not be discussing that again here but let us try to understand what is this what we are looking for the future. So here in this case this is what is our high bypass ratio engine. It says by increasing the diameter of my fan since we are getting say 70 percent of thrust by using the fan. So idea will come let us increase the diameter of this fan. What will happen if we are increasing the diameter of our fan then there may be chances that we will be having this ground clearance to be very low. So there may be chances when we are taking off or during landing this engine that will be touching to the ground and that is what will be giving the failure of your engine as well as aircraft and that is where the constraint that has come say you cannot increase the diameter of engine beyond certain range. Okay. Now one more thing is if you look at this is what is our engine there is nothing wrong with this engine. But you can understand that is what is having component that we say stator and rotor that is what is making stage. Okay. So here in this case if we are looking at for LP compressor for HP compressor 
we will be having more number of stages in order to have higher total pressure rise or we can say higher overall pressure ratio. So since we are expecting our thrust to be larger that means we are looking for our overall pressure ratio also to be larger. That means we are looking for more number of stages. When we say we are increasing the number of stages that means we are increasing basically our weight of the engine. At the same time we are increasing the length of our engine. What is happening? That's what is increasing our drag. And that is also constrained in sense of what we say specific fuel consumption. So for near future or say upcoming future, people they are looking for some kind of alternatives in order to address this kind of issues along with the environmental constraint that's what was imposed by regulatory body and that's what has given say idea or motivation to go with different kind of configuration we can say that is what is say contra rotating configuration here in this case you can realize these are the two rotors one that's what is rotating in clockwise direction the other one that's what will be rotating in counterclockwise direction so question will come what happens so there are many advantages there are many benefits that's what we will be discussing in an initial class so let's see suppose say this is what we are discussing about our high bypass ratio engine and as we discuss people they started working on the concept of control rotating so here if you look at this is what is a russian engine that's what was connected or that's what in installed on antino here we are having two propellers which are rotating in counterclockwise direction. Now this crop propellers which are rotating in counterclockwise direction you can imagine when you are sitting in the aircraft and if you look at outside if two rotors that's what is rotating in open it's a scary kind of situation. Same way GE they have started working earlier in 80s for development of say counter rotating unducted fans and later on they have stopped that project but still as on today they people they are working on the development of unducted kind of configuration we are not interested for our course for unducted kind of configuration we are more interested in ducted kind of configuration so here if you look at this is what is one of the engine you can see they are having the three spool configuration so here if you look at this is what is my hp spool and on the other side blue color one that's what is say we can say it's lp or you can say one of the spool and other spool that's what is say orange one so this blue and orange you can understand that is nothing but that's what is giving us counter rotating kind of configuration okay so here we will be having our main fan that's what will be rotating in counterclockwise direction and at the same time our turbine also will be rotating in counterclockwise direction so we are having counter rotating fan and we are having counter rotating turbine okay now these are the two most recent engines if you look at this is what is representing f-135 engine that's what was developed by United Technologies Pratt and & Whitney and if we look carefully all the compressor stages they are say counter rotating and turbines they are also counter rotating. So this engine that's what has been fitted with fifth generation aircraft what we say F-35. So the technology that has already been proven in sense of adoption of counter rotating kind of configuration. Now this engine that's what is fitted with the aircraft that's what is having VTOL kind of configuration so it's having vertical takeoff and landing and for that purpose they have fitted with say fan configuration that fan also is contra rotating kind of configuration so you can see here so this is what is giving benefit in sense of say vertical takeoff and landing so technology in sense of development and use of contra rotating fan that's what has been proven and this engine they are already been exist. Now parallelly in Europe if you look at 
there was a project that's what was initiated 10 years back that's what is called say vital project and for that vital project there are different organization which are been involved say SNECMA, say Siam Lab Russia and DLR they people they have designed three different kind of configuration with different materials with different aspects okay so this all we are looking for they all are counter rotating kind of configuration and they are been tested at Shyam lab Russia okay and here if you look at this is what is a distortion screen that's what is making artificial distortion we will be discussing this this is what is very important when we are talking about say application of this counter rotating now this is what is already been developed engine and that's what has been tested in Russia that's what is fitted with this test aircraft so you can say this is what is the progress for this counter rotating kind of configuration now the question will come what is there what motivates people to go with say new kind of technology so here if you look at we will try to understand with our fundamentals what all we know this is what is representing my velocity triangle for say conventional stage and if you look at carefully suppose I can assume my flow that's what is entering actually or it may be entering at some angle to my rotor okay and my flow that's what will be coming out from the rotor that's what is representing this velocity triangle what we realize we are having say whirl component that's what will be coming out from the rotor so if you recall when we have started discussing say this chapter for designs that time we have discussed about different kind of configuration only rotor rotor stator stator rotor all those configurations we have discussed that time also we have discussed about this aspect what we say this is what is my world component that's what will be coming out and that's what we are scripting by using this stator okay now in line to what all we have discussed here say we are having two rotors one that's what is rotating in this direction you can say in the clockwise direction and other rotor that's what is rotating in counterclockwise direction so my entry velocity triangle we can say it is similar to what we have seen here now at the exit of my rotor rotor one i will be having this as my velocity triangle now here in this case we are not having any stator okay we are having rotor and immediately I will be having second rotor that's what is rotating in opposite direction what it is doing you can understand my flow that's what will be coming out from rotor 1 with some absolute velocity and flow angle alpha 2 same flow we can assume that's what is entering inside my rotor 2 since it is rotating in opposite direction so let me put this direction of rotation this is what is say my u okay now uh, what it will be doing we know our velocity triangle that need to be a close velocity triangle so let me put this as a close velocity triangle now if we look at this is what is say my whirl component that's what is coming out from my rotor one that's what is been sucked by my rotor two and that's the reason why here if you look at this is what is giving me CW3 and that is what is added component to my peripheral speed here in this case no here if you look at since my direction of rotation and my whirl component that's what is coming they both are in same direction so what basically it is doing here if you look at that's what is giving me my relative velocity to be large at the entry of my rotor 2 okay and we know this part suppose if you are looking at say this is what is happening with my v3 and say this is what we say in sense of what is happening with my cw2 here the cw2 we are not utilizing in sense of what we need to do but at the same time this cw2 and cw3 they both are same and in opposite direction that's what is giving me my relative velocity at the rotor 2 it is entering at high relative velocity okay 
Now, this is what we can say by flow that is what will be coming out at the exit. Okay. So, what we realize based on our understanding here that is what is say you know we are having no stator. When we say there is no stator that is what will be reducing my size as well as overall weight of the engine. That is what is a promising feature. Okay. Secondly, we can extract more amount of work okay, per unit length. So, you can understand say since we are having less number of stages for counter rotating configuration for the same length as your actual engine has, we are configuring that is what is giving me higher amount of work that is what can be extracted. We are having higher operating relative velocity we have realized. At the entry of my rotor 2, my relative velocity seems to be higher. What it says, this is the reason why there is no need for us to rotate our rotor at high speed. There is no need to rotate at say transonic speeds and that is what is lowering the centrifugal stresses. Okay, And significant improvement that is what we are getting in sense of aerodynamic performance and efficiency as well as operating range also. So, in overall if you look at by incorporating or adopting this counter rotating concept, we are able to reduce the size, weight, number of components and we are able to reduce the manufacturing and maintenance cost. Okay? And that is what is attracting the use of this counter rotating concept for the engines. Okay? and whole lot of research and development activities that is what is going on for application of this counter rotating fan for say aero engines. This has other applications also say many industrial fans people they started using this concept of counter rotating. Many ventilation fans where size is a constraint they people they are opting with this counter rotating configuration. For future electric propulsion system. For that also people they started opting with this kind of configuration. So, there are many ongoing application and there are many future application based on what all benefits we are getting by incorporating this concept. Now, in order to realize that part during my doctoral study, we have work on design and development of counter rotating fan stage at IIT Bombay. So, this is what is my experimental facility. You can say we are having two rotors, they both are rotating in opposite direction. So, design of this counter rotating fan that is what is very challenging in sense because there is no open source discussion that is what is available for design. Okay. So, now this work that is what is available online. If you are interested, you can go through that part and that is what will give the confidence and idea how do we build our counter rotating fan configuration. So, what all parameters we have selected for this is we are having some restraints for say our design. So, maximum diameter of the fan that is what is available that, that is 406 meter because at the entry we are having our bell mount this bell mount that is what was available with the laboratory and that is what is having inner diameter of 406 mm and that is the reason why this is what is say 406 mm. The motor that is what are available uh, they are in the range of say 15 kilowatt rotational speed is 2400 rpm. Mass flow rate that is what we have taken as or assume as 6 kg per second. Now, here in this case there is one important aspect that is what we need to realize what kind of pressurize we are expecting because we are having two different rotors. Okay. So, for our design we have taken the total pressurize for the stage by both the rotor that is what is say 2000 Pascal and based on experience and based on the confidence level we have taken we have assumed our rotor 1 to be highly loaded. And we have taken that as say 1100 Pascal for rotor 1 and we are expecting total pressure rise for rotor 2 
that's what is say 900 pascal okay we will see what is the meaning of say higher loading of rotor one and these are say some of the parameter which are being chosen so for our design we have taken our aspect ratio to be 3 because we are discussing we are talking about the design of fan this same concept we can say we can opt for design of our say HP compressor also where we will be going with say aspect ratio to be slightly on the lower side maybe aspect ratio of 1 or 1.2 but for our configuration we have taken aspect ratio to be 3. Now these are the systematic approaches which are being opted for the design. So we can say based on what all we have restraints we have opted for say speed we have gone with the annulus dimension power requirement, mass flow rate and pressure rise and we will see what all are the global parameters for the design and what all we have opted for. So selection of geometrical parameters like aspect ratio, chord, number of blade that is what has been initially assumed. Then what all we have learned for say design of axial flow compressor we have gone with say velocity triangle calculation of different velocity components then we have calculated our performance parameters in sense of design say diffusion factor, degree of reaction, power requirement. Based on that we have finalized with some of the parameters. Okay, Very important thing that is what is say aerodynamic loading that is what is required throughout the span okay, for both the rotors. Then based on all parameters we have done our design then we have calculated our flow angles what we have discussed about incidence angle, deviation angle, camber angle, stagger angle. Based on similar approach what we have opted for we have also made our blades. We have stacked them both the rotor blades about the CG. Once that is what is ready with us we have gone with say computational study and based on that modifications they are being done in order to achieve expected performance. This modification like maybe number of blades, aerodynamic loading, flow angles, custom tailor profile. So all these things that is what is being opted for and the paper what I am putting that is what is having all these discussions available in open source. You can go with that part and based on doing this design we made our rotors. So let me show you these are our rotors based on what all calculation we have done. Okay. The purpose here to showcase is what all we are doing in sense of design that is what we are making also. So that is what will give more confidence in sense of design and development activity at the same time research activities. Now conventionally let me discuss about what we say in sense of operating range and performance. So if we look at here this is what is representation of say performance map for say our stage. So we will be having with decrease of mass flow rate we will be having rise of pressure and at one point we will be having stall. Now this is what is the performance map what we have achieved based on what experimental facility we have developed. Here it is very interesting to observe we are having two points say this is what is a partial stall and this is what is representing full stall. So if we look at carefully by incorporating this contra rotating kind of configuration we are able to increase our operating range. Since our target that is what was with change of different speed combination what is the change in the performance that is what was one of the parametric study for us. What need to be the actual spacing between two rotors if you will be putting two nearby what will happen if you are putting too far what will happen and what need to be the optimized one. So it says for our kind of configuration it is roughly coming say 90 percent of our chord and here if you look at with increasing the rotational speed of rotor 2 we are able to achieve high pressure rise but at the same time we have to compromise somewhere in sense of our say operating range 
and this I say partial stall and this is what is representing say full stall configuration that will be more clear if you will be putting say individual say performance of the rotor. So, these are the performance for my both the rotors at different speed configuration. Here if you look at this is what is with design speed both the rotors are rotating at design speed. Here in this case my second rotor that is what is rotating at the high speed and this is what is representing my second rotor when it is rotating at the low speed. And if you look at carefully this field 1 that is what is representing my total pressure rise coefficient. And if you observe carefully it says for wide range of my mass flow rate my rotor 1 is not getting stalled. That is what is the benefit of what we say in sense of higher aerodynamic loading of rotor 1. So, for all the three configuration when you are checking with it says my performance of rotor 1 it is not getting changed with the change of mass flow rate. Okay. Now, if we look at if we compare what is happening with the rotor 2 it says my rotor 2 that is what is acting in line to what conventional rotor that is what is working with. So, with decrease of mass flow rate it will be having say this is what is my stall of rotor 2 that is the reason I have discussed that as a partial stall condition. You can see by incorporating these two rotors that two which are rotating in opposite direction that is what is giving wider operating range that is what is a benefit. Now, one more configuration, one more study what was conducted that is what is in sense of what is the effect of inflow distortion. So, conventionally if you look at when my aircraft that is what is flying at the cruise condition my flow that is what is going clean or parallel to my engine axis. Okay. When we are taking off or landing that time it may be possible that in some of the region my air that is what will not go as per our expectation. Okay. And we are having different kind of inflow distortion. These inflow distortions are because of change of temperature, change of total pressure, change of velocity, because of presence of wake or maybe climatic change. All this that is what will be bringing the change or say that is what is called say inflow distortion. So, when we are sitting in aircraft it used to say turbulence. So, the turbulence is nothing but in language for aero engine people used to say inflow distortion. Okay. And that is what will be lead to reduce or deteriorate the performance. Sometimes if it is of extreme it may be possible that that will lead to failure of the engine. Okay. And if your engine is failed your aircraft that is what is failed. So, that is the reason this is what is very serious matter. Now, in order to understand what is happening with inflow distortion on counter rotating configuration, we have generated artificial distortion here. So, you can see we have taken 90 degree sector at the entry of my rotor 1 and these are the measurements using 7 hole probe before rotor 1 and you can see this is what is the propagation of distortion under two different configurations. Okay. You can say this is what is my design mass flow rate and this is what is my peak pressure mass flow rate configuration. Now, very interestingly at the exit of my rotor 1 or between two rotors we have done the measurement of total pressure. So, if you look at here this is what is representing what is happening with my total pressure at the exit of my rotor 1 and if you look at carefully we can say this effect that is what is getting rotated in the direction of my rotor 1 and you know you are getting nearly uniform kind of total pressure distribution. So, that is what is kind of rotation of my distortion. Now, let me tell you when we are discussing about the stage conventional stage where we are having rotor and stator what will happen what all that is what is coming out from my rotor that is what will be striking on the stator. Here in this case because of rotation we are having 
this to be moving in say direction of rotation of my rotor 1. At the exit of rotor 2, if we consider since this is what is rotating in opposite direction, we will see the effect of distortion that is what is going to reduce or we can say it is getting nullified at the exit of rotor 2 and that is what is a need. What we are looking for? The effect of inflow distortion that need to be minimized okay? and that is what we are getting by incorporating this counter rotating kind of configuration. So, this is also one of the benefit. Okay? Now, for future engines people they started talking about propulsive fuselage where we are having our flow that is what is entering inside the engine with some kind of inflow distortion. Here if you look at this is what is a future concept aircraft in which the engines are coded in your fuselage. Okay? The reason is in order to reduce the noise and in order to take the benefit in sense of installation and to get the wider space. Okay? So, this is what is wide body aircraft. Now, the challenge that is what is happening is I will be having my growth of boundary layer from this front towards the rear side. So, by the time my compressor that will be facing the flow, it will be having this kind of float operation distribution. So, what will happen? This is what will be striking on my fan. Suppose say we are using high bypass ratio engine or low bypass ratio engine and that is what will lead to deteriorate the performance. Now, the University of Cambridge and MIT, they people, they are working on development of such kind of configuration where they can minimize this inflow distortion. Okay. So, these all are the benefits in sense of counter rotating fan configuration. So, that is the reason we feel this concept or this design that need to be discussed, that need to be incorporated in the course and we will be discussing about this design. Okay. So, in next lecture we will start discussing how do we design of counter rotating fan at this moment we are targeting low speed configuration. So, with this if you are interested you can collect the material there are a lot of literature that is what is available from DLR that is what is available from SNECMA many literature they are available from Siam even from say India and China also. So, lot of work lot of research that is what is going on in sense of opting for counter rotating fan concept or counter rotating compressor concept for the engine. So, here we are stopping with thank you very much for your kind attention. We will be starting discussing about the design from the next lecture.